So in this lesson, we're talking about accelerated mobile pages, or AMP. Google's framework for better performance is called AMP, or accelerated mobile pages. It's kind of a very you know, stripped down HTML for maximum performance, mainly consisting of text and images only. Everything else is really fairly limited. You cannot use any external CSS or external JavaScript, you know, except for asynchronous JavaScript. And of course, no Flash or no Java at all. It is generally optimized for lower CPU and memory usage. Also, you know, consuming less bandwidth, and as a result, it is less aggressive in terms of your battery's lifetime. It is ultimately supposed to lead to better user experience just because of its almost instant loading effects. In comparison to regular HTML, it is also important to understand that CSS can only be inlined as non-blocking, and that there are some limitations in terms of the size. Further, there are different requirements for standard attributes. You know, for example, with images, you need to specify the width and the height, which is not the case with regular HTML markup. These attributes were optional in the past. From a setup perspective, there are two general ways to build it. Either you create a copy of your regular you know, article or web page and build an additional AMP version on top of it. In this case, you would need to implement a rel AMP HTML and the rel canonical to create the connection between those two URLs. Another way would be to go full AMP. That means you have only one individual URL, but in that case you'd need to roll out AMP as your standalone framework, so there is no URL duplication, but you know, ultimately you would be fully dependent on Google's standard and their framework. In both cases, you have to rewrite your HTML though, as default HTML tags are not supported anymore. The AMP JavaScript library, for example, transforms the AMP image into a regular image kind of in the background. Whenever you build AMP, really make sure you dump those URLs into Google's AMP validation tool to make sure that you know, your pages are actually validating. Otherwise, there's almost no chance for an AMP page to be shown in the search results, or in the news box, or in the carousel, etc. At the moment, AMP is available mainly for publishing and in the recipe space. It also has been extended to e-commerce now. It is important to realize that Google is not only using AMP in regular and news search, but also in image search and the recipe carousels. On a global level, AMP is being used more and more. For example, in China, Baidu uses MIP, which is essentially the same as AMP, with just different caching and some minor changes to it. Before you decide to implement AMP or not, you know, here are some of the things to keep in mind. Like in my mind, AMP drives discussion and innovation, making people take the need for fast loading sites way more seriously. It's essentially becoming this agenda topic, really. And it also enables collaboration. So different teams and stakeholders, they have to carefully consider performance metrics just because of the limitations and restrictions that come with AMP it's going to create additional work. So converting existing sites to AMP is not like a one-on-one -on -one copy. You need to rewrite your HTML and build a new CSS as well. So you can't rely on JavaScript. That leads to the fact that the amount of testing that needs to be done on AMP converted sites is very demanding. And it's also not easy to just match the regular site with the AMP site. It can also increase maintenance costs for you. You know, extending CMS capabilities to manage AMP content can be expensive, and additional maintenance and development work, you know, for example with the IT or editorial teams, will increase costs even further. It can have an impact on crawling depending on which kind of setup you choose. If you add an AMP URL, it is essentially another URL for every URL that you already have. So Google now needs to crawl way more, and eventually your very important pages will be crawled less often. From a performance perspective, the magic with AMP is you know, prefetching and pre-rendering. There's this one second difference from the perceived rendering versus direct load of any AMP. That speed you can't make up and the perceived loading time for users is even greater. However, if you look at the regular performance metrics and you exclude the pre-loading mechanisms, then a regular website can easily be as fast as an AMP version. So, for example, responsive sites with The Guardian in the UK do quite nicely, or the site in Germany, they do, they do it as well. Their responsive offerings 
if you take out the preloading effect from AMP, they are actually faster with the responsive sites than with the AMP versions. So using AMP must not be an excuse for having a slow loading website. Really invest in your property to become best in class before you even consider using AMP. If you are into publishing, you need to be in the carousel, no question about that. This is where almost all the publishing traffic is. So right now you can only get into the carousel if you have an AMP. So I'm not saying don't do AMP, just be sure to look at the bigger picture. Remember that AMP is not the only solution. You can easily build fast loading sites without relying on AMP. If you opted for AMP, there are several useful checks within SEMrush site audit issue report that might help you to check how well you've implemented AMP throughout your website. Basically, they will help you to make sure that, you know, for example, there are no AMP issues on your website, that also all AMP pages have canonical tags, and that your website is free of AMP style layout as well as templating issues. Thank <laughs> you.